everything the state does, it gets wrong and makes it worse. So we've had huge state intervention with kids in giving out contraception. We've undermined parental consent. We've undermined parental authority. And into that role, the people who get more authority often influenced in quite a bad way as social workers, police. They're the people who are meant to be looking after us, but they don't look after children very well at all. Mm. Um, in fact, I begin to think they hate children. They don't like it. They don't like their jobs. And it's a sort of breakdown of society that another group coming in that has entirely different values, regards the girls as white trash, totally exploits and nobody is prepared to stand up to it. It, it, it. it is appalling that this is going on. And it's not just Rotherham. It's a whole set of towns round, round, round the north and the Midlands of England. It's probably in London, for all we know. And it's always under, under the carpet. And now, with lockdown, with all yeah. these things, the more depersonalised everything becomes, nobody even knows anybody. Nobody knows what's happening. No, the, th the one that shocked me, you mentioned uh, some of those other towns, the one that shocked me is Telford, which is a new town. It's, you know, barely half a century old. So it's not one of these things where it has, you know, great inner city problems and all the It was a custom built town. And you said, uh, you mentioned that the, the, they don't really like these girls. I was rather shocked at the number uh, and the girls don't like it either. I mean, the, the ladies I spoke to said they got fed up of the police just writing them off as, quote, white slags, unquote. In other words, the whole apparatus of the state that is meant to protect you basically consigns you to the category yeah. simply because, you know, you got, you got knocked up when you were 12 and you had your first abortion yeah. and all the rest of it. And what's and the solution? You're over, you're done. Mm. Yeah, the solution of the state is to offer contraception and abortions. I mean, that's the brutal... Mm. That's the brutal truth of what happens. That's where the state intervenes. Oh, they're very, very active about offering abortions, contraception, morning after. Then it's not a problem, is it? If no babies are born from it, it's not a problem. And the teenage birth rate has gone down, but the point is it doesn't address the problem, it doesn't address the exploitation at all. In fact, I know you don't like the word grooming, but in my view, that is part of the grooming that goes on for these children. Mm -hmm. To be thought that that, you know, we, we read um, in the same time you're talking about in 2016, we were reading interviews with girls where, where they were going, asking for help saying this is happening to me, to doctors, to social workers, and simply not being helped at all. Or, or in, you know, no proper protection intervention. Um, but the care system itself is culpable um, because so many children run free in the care system and they're way away from their natural homes. And um, uh, care, the care workers are not allowed to physically restrain them. So there are all sorts of compliance rules, which, again, any old-fashioned measure that actually would help a child has almost been undercut. Yes, it's, it's interesting uh, that. I mean, the, the girls I met, uh, as they explained themselves to me, they were damaged, but they were resilient. There's a whole group of other girls who are just, because of this happened to them when they were 12, 13, 14, are just broken and wrecked for life. Well, and th there is something rather callous in the public indifference to the fate. Or, I mean, presumably, <coughs> you know, as you've pointed out, their families don't care about them but, in many instances. Well, but their families might, but they're sort of a bit powerless. We have government... So I yeah. went round doing but work I mean, on, on drugs policy. I visited a lot of these towns and I, I went to look where, and I found, I mean, the ghastly sort of things that are happening that lead to this. There be parents who were going to, onto drug services were never asked if they had children, but they were prescribed methadone. They were still using street drugs. Nobody ever, this great and glorious state that wanted to roll out methadone to everybody in England who ever touched a drug, um, never found out whether they had children and whether the children were safe in that environment. And then you'd go to another group of social workers, drug workers, who are talking about um, looking after families. And what did they say? What was their favourite word? They were going to teach the children resilience. You know? 
Right. No, right. I, I mean, that, that is not what you would do with your five, six, ten-year-old child. You would be protecting them, not no. teaching them resilience. So you can go out and sort it out on no. your own. We're going to make you strong. An extraordinary attitude. No, they wouldn't be... They... No, they I mean, wouldn't they're... be this cynical about, uh, about their own children. You're absolutely right there.